Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's time, it's time for me to finally review Google's Pixel 4a. And as all things, it's not perfect, right? But I have to say, this is my favorite Android phone as of now. And I have a OnePlus 8 over there sitting on the table. And what I wanna talk about is what I like, what I don't like, obviously. And then also why I really hope that Google continues to go this route and make phones like this, because overall as a package, this is it. So let's go ahead and just go down the spec list real quick. In here, you have a 5.8 inch display, a Snapdragon 730G, six gigabytes of RAM, 3140 milliamp hour battery, a 12 megapixel rear camera capable of 4K at 30 frames a second, and an eight megapixel front facing camera, a USB-C charging port capable of doing 18 watt fast charging, stereo speakers, and it's only available in this black that they offer. But to be quite honest, I like it. I love simplicity. This is nice. Now, I personally don't think that this black and this plain black that they offer really disappointed. Like I'm a simple man, right? I'm, I'm very easy to please. And simplicity is something that is always on my list when it comes to devices or just the way things work. And this takes the cake for that. On the back here, you have a fingerprint sensor, which quite honestly, guys, this is probably my favorite thing of using this phone because when I wear my mask and I'm out at the store, I don't have to like wait for my facial recognition to fail and then put in my code or none of that. I just literally scan it and it works great. So this is another reason why I personally think we should start adopting fingerprint sensors again, at least in power buttons, just because in these tough times and any other time in the future, those can be such a great secondary authentication feature. The color power button is something I also really liked. It has like a nice little mint color to it. And quite honestly, I just think it's a nice aesthetic. So if uh, this can be a trend that continues, I will be very much okay with that. And under the power button, you also have the volume up and down and the buttons feel great when you press them. So if that's something that you like, I mean, they're there. You do have a headphone jack on the top of the phone, which actually came in handy when I had a rental car with my family when they visited. Uh, they, the car only took headphone jacks, so that came in handy big time. On the bottom here, you have the USB-C charging port that is capable of 18 watt fast charging, as well as the speakers. And on the top, on your earpiece, is also a small speaker as well, where you can actually hear a secondary sound from. And continuing on the back, you have a rear facing camera. It's a 12.2 single main camera shooter. And honestly guys, for 12.2 megapixels and having it be a pixel shooter, this is great. The only thing I will say is I actually did miss the ultra wide when that was a thing. So if, if Pixel in the future wants to like maybe condense their cameras on their phone, I, I would highly suggest just an ultra wide and a main shooter, but in only having a main shooter, I wasn't upset with anything. And now let's get to the front of the device. So here you have a 5.8 inch 1080p OLED display with the resolution of 1080 by 2340, 443 PPI. And I have to say for this being an OLED, and even though it's only 1080p, it is a beautiful screen. I really like using it. The only issues I've ever had with the display is maybe the brightness. Uh, anytime I'm outside, I just put it all the way to the brightest setting and it's capable to be seen outdoors. But you know, I would have hoped for just a little bit more of like a nitpick, but other than that, the display is great. And you know what else that I really like? The fact that it's 5.8 inches, because this is so similar to my iPhone 11 Pro that I'm coming from and still currently using. And this is something I really want. I really hope that phone manufacturers continue to make 5.8 inch high-end phones because not all of us want big phones anymore. I'm, I'm just completely done with owning a big phone. Part of the reason why I don't use my OnePlus 8 because it's just, I don't want a six point whatever screen. I was trying it out again, not digging it. I don't want it, keep it here. Now, another thing you'll notice on the front on the screen is the hole punch. So there you're having a single eight megapixel camera and much like a lot of the front facing cameras, guys, it's okay to take photos with. It looks good when you record. Quite honestly, it's not thing that is gonna blow your mind away, but it is still good for the $350 price that you're paying for this phone. But let me go back to the rear camera really quick. And let me just say, when it comes to $350 and having this camera, it is literally the best camera I've personally used. I still think it's even completely on par if not slightly better than the iPhone 11 Pros. Cause when I just took regular shots, everything came out great. The only thing I would say about this is because of the chip inside, it's gonna take quite a, like a minute to process. Like when you take a photo, it's not gonna be readily available. You're gonna have to give it like, just give it like five seconds and then it'll process and you're able to see it in its full quality. So I just have to say like, when you take a photo, give it a couple seconds and it'll be good to go. But when you get those photos, they're looking great. And I'm gonna touch on the battery life in a little bit, but I also have to say, the more you take photos because it needs that little bit of extra juice to process, the more your battery life will drain. So keep that in mind if you're gonna have a long photography day that your battery will 
most likely start going down a little faster than you'd like because of all that processing you're doing. And it's gonna be the same thing when you go and record your 4K footage at 30 frames a second, your battery will take a hit, but that's just like any other phone. Now, when it comes to the phone, it comes with a 3140 milliamp hour cell. And here's the thing, a lot of reviewers, before I got my phone, were like, that battery life seems small and blah, blah, blah. And, and am I the only one that thought like, no, that actually sounds fine because it's a 1080p, it's an OLED, you can keep things dark, it has a 730G chip that isn't so power hungry. Like I did not assume, like a lot of people did, that the battery was small. And honestly, to my standards, the battery life, it works well. This battery life is so close to being just as good as my iPhone 11 Pro, but I will give it still to the iPhone 11 Pro, um, that I did not feel that when I used this, I was losing a feature that I love so much on my previous phone because the battery life on here, the smart adaptiveness that it has, and honestly, just the way it uses its power, it is really good. And the best example I can give to that is going to the airport, which took 30 minutes, coming back, which also took 30 minutes, using GPS the entire hour that I had to get there and back, and it only took 10% of battery from my phone. That is nice. Now, if your battery does die out or if it dies a lot faster than you'd like, you have the 18 watt charger that it comes with for fast charging, which is nice as well. The only sucky thing I will say is like, I really, really wish it had wireless charging because on my desk here, when I go to work, I do like to put my phones on there just so I can top it off by the end of the night so I don't have to leave it plugged in. It's not a deal breaker for me, but it's still kind of sucky that it's not available. So there's that. Now let's go ahead and finally talk about the performance of this phone. So when it comes to it, the phone, I would not categorize it as a slow phone by any means. I think it holds up well for everyday usage. The only times that it ever has hiccup is like much like a lot of the other reviewers have said, which is basically when you go ahead and play games and whatnot. But the thing is you can still play your games. Nothing feels like it's being so limited, but I have to say when I went back to my iPhone 11 Pro, right? I did feel the snappiness of the Pro compared to this phone. This phone is not as snappy as maybe one would like. But when it came to my usage and just the way I would navigate through the UI and do my things, I didn't feel like I lost a lot. Like I felt when I went back, I was like, well, it's snappy, but did I really lose anything? Like I can't put into words as well as that. Like I didn't feel I lost so much. Now I'm not saying this is on par with the Snapdragon 865 Plus nor the 813 Bionic chip on the phones. All I'm saying is, that I think this is a lot more capable to be used by an everyday person without feeling they're losing so much if someone coming from a high-end phone like myself am very happy here as well. Hopefully a lot of my rambling there made sense, but just know it is fine. It really is. Another thing I'm fine with is 128 gigs of storage. Like, I don't use and put a lot of stuff in my phone. And a lot of people always say like, well, you're only getting 128 gigs. There's no other options, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Unless you're gonna record 4K footage up the butt with this phone, and unless this is literally your tablet, your phone, your computer and everything, I don't see how 128 gigs is small. I love that that's actually the starting storage on this phone. I would be more upset if it was 64, then I would agree. I just still think that I'm one of those people that like, again, it goes back down to simplicity. The simple things of having a good amount of storage, a great camera, a simply beautiful device, a fingerprint sensor, a small compacted phone, at least in my standards, is small and compacted. Uh, you know, like a lot of these things are just checked off that, for $350, I cannot be so upset about things because if I want more in a phone, my mind would just say, go and buy the premium stuff. So let's wrap things up. Should you buy this phone? Is this a good phone to buy? Yes. And I gotta say, if you are interested in getting a 5G version of this phone, which will include, I believe, based on the rumors, a better chip and maybe even a bigger battery and size, you can go ahead and wait for it because it's gonna come at the end of this month alongside Google's Pixel 5. So maybe one of those phones will be exactly what you want but when it comes to me, again, when it comes down to simplicity, this is it. This is where I'm happy, and I think you will be too. But all right, thank you guys for watching this video. If I missed anything that you wanted me to talk about, leave it down in the comment section. I'll go ahead and answer you. And if you like this video, please give it a like so that YouTube algorithm knows what's up. And if you are new, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future reviews because I got quite a few I got to talk about, especially about the S7 Plus. Okay, guys, stay clean, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.